18th. It was like two months since I quit smoking. And I do not feel any better. I actually, my yeah. health has been. You feel like out. not the same at all. Huh. Well, I have not smoked now in two weeks. Oh, um, you didn't tell me that. No, I didn't because I didn't want to set myself up for failure. But I'll tell you that now. <laughs> uh, my wife, she's actually quit smoking. She's been, she's going on over a month, almost two months. And um, I quit two weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel more tired. I felt that too at first. And I think that's just like, you know, friend died. So you're slightly depressed. I found that too at yeah. the beginning and then it changed and then it was like, okay. And then, uh, you know, and then you're like, okay, this is good. And, uh, I don't know. Now it's like going back to a whole different cycle. I think you have ups and downs with it. Absolutely. And, uh, I don't know. I, I find that I'm, um, what's the word I'm fighting things more like health type things. Um, I got a cold and then it's like, I'm fighting something else. I'm thinking, Oh my God, my body has just turned like such into such a wimp now. <laughs> but then you started working out and everything too, right? Well that, yeah, that too. So that's been how many, that's been, uh, I think a month. Yeah, and I went today. Oh my God. And like, I'm just so floppy after I go. But I am feeling stronger. But it's like, I just don't like, I, I'm having like these little colds and just other little things. I've got like this low grade rash on my face. And I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to be like so much better now. And it's not mm -hmm. the case. Yeah, you're supposed to feel, you know, everybody kept telling me you'll have so much more energy. Oh, yeah. You'll taste food better. Uh, you know, yeah, all those, all these things, and yeah. uh, nope. no, I don't, no. I don't feel that. I, I feel less energy. Um, food doesn't taste any better than it did. No, and to be honest with you, I, I probably most people say, "Oh, you eat more and you gain weight." Blah blah. blah. I, I haven't gained weight, and I haven't started eating more. But what I have noticed though is smells. Smells have been coming back, and some of the smells oh, you? Okay. are not very pleasant. Well, that's the thing. Do you really want to like be able to smell better? Like this is the this is the thing. It, it's like if you have a cat, you have a litter box. That <laughs> litter box smells way worse now than it ever did before. I want to get rid of the damn cat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the eating more and gaining weight comes later because now for me, it's been a couple months and now it's like, that's what I'm thinking about often is like, oh, what can I eat now? What can I eat now? But I'm really trying, I'm like really watching it. So I'm trying to be really good about it because I don't want to, because I've worked so hard in the last year and, yeah. and well, I think it also, it, it's the, I think it's the taste thing, the flavor thing. They, people think, well, it tastes better. So you eat more and, and but, no, I just uh, want something. You've got a trainer though. And I'm sure yeah. that they work with you on your diet and things like that. What, what kind of clean foods to eat? Uh, you know, you're not going to have to worry about it. If, if you're, if you enjoy those clean foods, you're never going to have to worry about gaining the weight, I don't believe. No, and I never have in other times that I've quit smoking. I've never gained weight. The only thing that I do notice um, is I'm drinking more coffee. Oh, God, yeah. Holy smokes. I bet you I go through three or four cups a day where I used to just do one cup a day. Done. Oh, my you know? God. Well, Okay, well, I'm drinking like three times that amount. When I say one cup, my my coffee mug at work, um, yeah, it's it's a twenty four ounce coffee mug, so it's not a small coffee mug. Okay. Uh, so, I, and now I'm drinking three or four of those in a day versus just the one that I was drinking in the morning. But uh, I was drinking like Monster Energy drinks too in during that time also, and I stopped doing that. So. 
Yeah. I'm hoping that helps a little. I tried to cut, I cut out, I cut, I've been drinking a ton of water. Um, and, See, I'm not and, drinking enough of that, but yeah, mm-hmm. I tell you, this freaking quitting smoking thing, it's just like, I just want to get past the, ugh, I just want to get past the. Well, my doctor said anytime I feel like having a cigarette, just go drink a glass of water. Believe it or not, it does take the craving away from, from the cigarette. It really does. I know. It's just, but, you know, uh, it's freaking annoying. I have to pee a whole lot more. <laughs> this is the thing. This is the thing with all the coffee too, right? It's like, oh my God. Now I, so yeah, I'm drinking more coffee, but I guess it's better than. With with all the water that I've been drinking, my body has decided that it's normal time to wake up now because I have to pee is like 4.37 a.m. That's gross. That's it gross. Is disgusting. And then you go back to sleep and then I get to get up at, you know, I got to get up at 6.30. So I go back to sleep and I just lay there tossing and turning. I have the most horrible rest for those two hours. It, it's absolutely pathetic. It, it's to the point where I want to start going to bed at like nine o'clock. So when I get up at four 30, I can just stay up. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of screws with the whole night owl thing you got going there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so, awful. It's freaking awful. So that, yeah. that is the, that's the freaking trials and tribulations that we're going through. So for those of you who are, joining us thank you and uh if you've just recently quit smoking we feel your pain so uh yeah quit smoking a long time ago that's the other thing i want to ask you this because i noticed this from other people who have quit smoking there's I, I know people who have never smoked a day in their life and they they'll make comments oh like, yeah and oh, i want to slap them it doesn't smell i don't like the way it smells don't come in here if you smoke blah 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 yeah. and it irritates me because i smoke well enough away from them i don't blow it in their face i'm not doing all that shit especially if it's outside right right yeah cuz you're not sucking in any of that car pollution or industry pollution or the crap that you clean your house with or anything else or that perfume you're wearing or anything this is the only pollution in the world I get it. But I have found people who were smokers before are worse. Yes, they are. Never smoked ever. Well, that's the self-righteousness thing, right? Oh my gosh. It's horrible. There, there's a, one of the guys in our office used to be a smoker and he would just, Oh man, he, he would go off. He, oh, I can't stand the smell. You guys stink. It's disgusting. So disgusting worst habit i ever had like yeah dude, go smoke a cigarette or something lighten up brother yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know it yeah it's tough it's tough it yeah it's, it's We're brutal quitters. We're so how did you quit how did you do it i just quit oh did you oh my yeah. god i would have killed people i smoked uh my last cigarette and it, the hardest thing was not was breaking the routine of getting up in the morning and stopping at the gas station to get my cup of coffee and a pack of cigarettes. That was the hardest routine to break. That's the thing is the routines. Yeah. You get up in the morning. I remember the first morning I got up and it was like, I have no reason to get up. Like I can't have a smoke. So like I have no reason to get up. So I found what I did was I would wake up and then I would like grab my phone and lay in bed for a bit and kind of like, you know, answer any messages. So my routine was different in the morning because I used to get up, grab my coffee, grab a smoke, go outside. And and that was it. Um, But, you know, then I couldn't do that. There was no way I could just get up, grab a coffee. And then what? I'd wander around the house aimlessly, not knowing what to do. So yeah, it's definitely breaking routine. Yeah, Bill, I got my hundred Facebook likes, so I had to quit. Um, <laughs> no, but it, I needed to quit anyways. My wife had quit, and I wanted to support her decision to quit because with me smoking, still, oh, it's hard. It would have made it difficult for her. So I wanted to make sure that uh, you know I was supporting her, and, and so we did this together. We couldn't do it at the same time, though. No, you can't because if. If she had quit and I had quit at the same time, we probably would not be having this kind of a conversation. 
we yeah. would have probably a conversation about I'm looking for a new place to live. Yeah. Um, I've totally got to buy right. You'd be broadcasting live from the local jail. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Maybe the local library, but not the local jail. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you definitely can't do it together. I remember doing that before. And if you're in a relationship and you both quit, it doesn't work because it doesn't work at all. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a good time. It's a good time to. It's a good time to do it. It's freaking tough as hell. But yeah, you have to break the routines. And I almost feel bad. Like, so like the store that I used to go to all the time, it's like, I have not been there other than to buy gas. And I pay at the pump for it. And they haven't been in. And I'm actually like feeling guilty. Like, are they wondering where I am? Like, I feel really bad. Like, you know, it's been two months. I'm not in buying smokes. Do they, I almost feel like, like I should go in there and say something like, hey, like, it's nothing to do with you. Like, it's not, not personal. Like, you know, I've just quit smoking. Like, I I think that every time I drive by that store, like, oh, I used to have great conversations with the people in there. Right. Well, the store I stop at, it's literally on my way to work. So I live about mm, maybe three miles away from work. Yeah. And the store is two miles away from my house. And then the my work is another mile away from that. Maybe it's not even that far. Maybe it's like two miles and one mile. One, I don't know. But the the point is, is I stop in there every single day. So they know me by name. So it's, hey, Chris, how's it going? Everybody in the store knows me. So they they all you know welcome me by name, which is kind of nice. when If you think about it, it's kind of nice when you walk into somewhere yes. and it's by name. And there's especially when there's other customers around and they see that that uh, that friendliness that's going on and how these people care enough to get to know who you are. So have you stopped going there? No, I still go there, oh. but the hard, you know, at first when I quit, um, they knew my routine. So they would have my cigarettes on the counter when I brought my coffee up. They just, they just knew what I was going to do. And uh, the, yeah. the first morning, the poor gal, I was like, um, I don't need the cigarettes this morning. Oh yeah. Smokes I said, no, I quit. She goes, Really? Is she almost like, yeah, right. I've heard this one before. Yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs> I told her I quit. And she, so she goes, okay. So then the next morning, this is this is what was so cool because of that, that routine, you know, it's hard to break. So the next morning, they've got these amazing chocolate chip cookies, these giant chocolate chip cookies. So the the, when I come in, she had a giant chocolate chip cookie there. And she goes, I figured this would take the place of your cigarettes. <laughs> I bought the chocolate chip cookies. I've, and I've been buying a damn coffee and a chocolate chip cookie every morning now. Oh, <laughs> hey, they're going to get a little bit more money out of me one way or another. <laughs> yeah. But that's nice. See, that's nice. That's the whole thing about the friendliness and the store thing and them knowing you. But that's cool. Well, way to go. Welcome to the Quitters Club. Yes, quitting, quitting rocks. Quitting, yay. <laughs> it's awful. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> thank you everybody for joining Grit and Grace tonight. If you're joining, there's been a lot of interest in our hot topic later on. So stick around. If you have to leave, make sure you come back. We're going to talk about the taboo career choices for women later on we've had a lot of interest we've had a lot of likes on our page because people want to talk about this and i hope people some people would talk about it from experience so like we want to hear from you join the conversation later what do you think is it empowering is it disempowering all these there's quite a few different um different uh careers like this so and i'm gonna and i did a a, a short poll at uh, the local Sam's Club, a short poll, a short poll, yes. So we, I got some, uh, I got some ideas from some, some uh, uh, very awesome ladies that were shopping at the Sam's Club. And uh, at first, they all thought I was kind of crazy and a little bit loony, and didn't really know if they should talk to me. But uh, they all opened up a little bit and uh, gave me some really cool uh, comments that I'm going to share with everybody. So definitely want to stick around for that and. I've even got a uh, personal story, uh, something not mine though. It, this is from my brother. This is this is a story, a conversation I had. We, uh, me and my wife, had with my brother oh. back 
before he had children. So, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Hear that. Yes, and I'm going to share something later on, too, with this. uh, Because we're all about being transparent, right? So I'm going to share something later with that hot topic. So Awesome. Yeah. So, hey, I want to ask a question. You go to Sam's Club. Yes. You as a membership club? Yes. How much do you do you have to pay? We do. What's it's, the what's it cost for a Sam's Club membership for the year? I think it's like $112 for the year. Holy shit, really? Yeah, I think that's so. a lot. Uh, it might be too much. I don't know. I that's just for our whole family though. That's not just me, my wife. My sisters, it's it's for everybody in our family. Whoa. Okay, so now there's, I've learned about, there's a BJ's. Okay. Do you know about BJ's? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. Well, Why would people name a store that? But there is a BJ's here in Rapid City. I'm uh, wondering uh, if mm-hmm. anybody's watching, like, do you go there? Do you have a membership? How much is it? Like, I want to know. I want to know. There's Not a reason story. why I'm asking. I understand that there's probably a really good reason why you're asking. Uh, the BJ's here is actually a uh, gas station. It's it's not a it's a convenience store. Oh, so no, this is like a store like a Costco or a Sam's Club. We don't have one like that. Oh, OK. Hmm. I hate, but maybe it's only on the East Coast. It could be. It I could have be. a lot of friends like Florida, like up the coast that talk about that. See, and we we didn't have we don't have Costco up here. We had just the Sam's Club. Yeah, now you can go into Oklahoma, Texas, that area where where we used to be. That was Costco. I uh, know Texas had Sam's Club too. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I, I think it's a regional thing with uh, Costco's. It's weird. I get yeah. to use my Costco card down in the states. Yeah, yeah, it's it's same thing with Sam's Club. If there's Sam's Clubs up in Canada, you can use them wherever. There might be in the east. There isn't any here. I've heard of Sam's Club, but there's a lot of stuff back east. Who knows? I have no clue. Anyway, that was my little question. What the, what's it cost for a Costco card? Well, nothing for me because my brother-in-law works at Costco, so I think. There's a few you get as an employee, you get a few free memberships, including your own. So I had one, my mom had one, and then I guess my sister got a card. My mom has passed away now. So I don't know, maybe my niece got that one, but so I don't have to pay anything. But I think just a regular membership is like 50, 55 bucks or something, but that's Canadian. So it's less than American. Yeah. And I, I don't even know what it is for Sam's Club, right? Honestly, yeah. we just pay it every year. I want to say it's like 112 bucks for the entire family, but I, I don't know. I'm there you not. go. 50 bucks or a hundred. Yeah. The hundred dollar for Costco. Oh, are you, are you in Canada, Bill? Yes, you are. Um, at that, do you get cash back? If you do the higher membership, you get like 3% back on your, so if you do like a ton of shopping at Costco, it pays, you get 3% back. But anyway, just yeah, curious, we, just curious. Why don't you know? Yeah, we get the same thing. I think it's. I think they're pretty similar across the yeah. board. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so did you get up early and watch the royal wedding? No, I did not. I really could care less about the royal wedding. I I don't. I have not watched my own wedding no. bit, <laughs> since the. I seriously, I, I have, since it was I, first done. Yeah, I, I was there. I remember it. I don't need to watch the video. <laughs> do you really remember it? I do. I really do remember it. Do you? I'm impressed. I what? Seriously? I, 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 totally. I am. <laughs> no, I, I, I do. Re- I do remember the ceremony. And uh, that only reason I remember it is because things, you know, everybody knows weddings don't always go perfect. And ours was just a tragic event leading all the way up until the ceremony itself. And then we got to the ceremony and everything just smoothed out until my wife forgot her vows. 
And the worst part, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know. Usually it's the guy that forgets about Yeah. Me. Here's the worst part. The the minister is saying, you know, says, repeat after me. He is giving her the lines she's supposed to give to me. And she forgot the words after he said them. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. So, yeah, I do remember. Our, our, and then, uh, of course, uh, our, our reception, we had this beautiful uh, ice sculpture of a swan. And, uh, oh, hoity-toity. I know, right? Uh, it helps to know people who work at the ice place. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, so we had this beautiful swan sculptor. But by the time we got there, the, the wedding party arrived. Corinne's uncle had stuck his arm around the swan to take a picture with it. And he broke the head off. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder you remember this wedding. All this shit happened. Well, there were there were key anchor points in yeah. during the wedding. All these different key anchors that help you remember things. Um, and it's it's it was a good day. It really was. Oh my god! And then the rest of it turned out well. I hope it did. You know the oh, good. the rest of the evening we had uh, we had karaoke and stuff like that because we were a singing family. Our, our, my family, believe it or not, loves to sing. So we had karaoke and we we had a lot of fun. Uh, Corinne's aunts got up with their back background bitches and they sang some great songs. And then when it was all said and done, uh, we went to the hotel and we passed the fuck out. <laughs> we just that's what happened at my at my wedding too that night. It was just like ordered pizza, crashed. Yeah, dress was still on. Yeah. I was wearing my military uniform. That was still on. I think I took my jacket off. That was it. And we laid down in the bed and out. Crashed. Yeah. Done. I don't think wedding nights are like the whole thing that people think. I'm like, oh, okay. You're just so tired. You're so bad because there's yeah, just so true. much adrenaline and you're so busy. And yeah, I don't think they really are what people think. No, no. I, I you You have this notion in your mind of what it's going to be like and it's definitely not that. I guarantee you, even the royal wedding, the prince and the new princess, they went back to the hotel room, looked at each other and say, what a fucking mess that was. And passed the crashed. Fucking- <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No, no doubt. No. So this this is my, that, that question was my lead into the uh, his and hers. Oh, well, okay. Well, let's just see what that is because uh, I had a question about that, actually. Um, I, I do have a question. Uh, what was your thought about it not being in England? I had zero thought about it. No, oh, okay. All right. Just Honestly. Well, I, I mean, it's... We're like making a big deal out of it. And- I know. And that's sort of my thing. And I think the bi- the people that were making the biggest deal out of it were women. We are so, Oh my God. It's such double standards. So such <laughs> double standards with women. I mean, I just, the, the judgments and the insults and the comparisons and the, on and on and on and on and it never freaking ends and i just think my god it's it's crazy and you know it's women that talk about can we just you know support other women and not be judgmental and all that stuff women are the worst they really really are the worst and i saw a bunch of that uh with this whole wedding thing i watched little clips of it i wasn't gonna get up like i don't know four in the morning or whatever it was for me to get up. I wasn't going to do that. Uh, Not important enough for me. I know some people that had, you know, parties and watching parties and things like that. I wasn't going to sit and watch the whole thing. By the time I got up the next day, it was on YouTube and I watched some little (laughs) clips and I, you know, I wanted to see a little bit of guests walking in and I wanted to see what she looked like. And I think she's a very sweet girl. And I liked watching the exchange when they looked at each other and, you know, it's very different now. The monarchy is very different now. It's not so stodgy and stiff and, you know, you could see 
she was kind of laughing during the ceremony and they have their little jokes between each other. And, but there's just people who always got to like, I don't know, make comments and shit. Well, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's all that interesting to be honest with you. It just for, for whatever it is. Well, guy, yeah. Guys aren't. Well, for anything though, I mean the, the significance of, was it the Prince of Wales? Is that what his title is? No, uh, Sussex. Sussex. Okay, so it's it's just the whole thing to to anybody. It's just like who really cares? I mean, the last time we cared about any type of monarchy, like a prince and princess, was you know Princess Diana, and we know how that turned out. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like, eh, we're not going to put so much stock in this one. We just, you know, it's just not going to happen. You know what I liked? I mean, even though it cost like a shit ton of money, more than any of us will probably see in our life. Um, it was smaller. I mean, smaller in, you know, <laughs> in their world, you know, it wasn't the grand, you know, Princess Diana's wedding or even, uh, the other young, what's his face, his brother. They got married, but I liked it. it was a little bit smaller and it was a little bit more, you know, a little bit more understated in their world. But yeah, I, well, you know, there's some people who don't care about the monarchy at all. I know there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of people that think we should do away because, you know, Canada is linked to the monarchy, right? She's our queen and all of that. Uh, but there's some people that do really love it. And I, you know, if you do great, um, I, I have no opinion either way. Um, you know, I liked to see little clips here and there of it, but, um, just some of the comments and the, the opinions and the judgments is just what gets me all the time that, um, it's just people that just, I don't know, trash other people for the things that they like or the comments they had about certain things and why somebody wasn't like this and why was that done like that? And I just think, come on, come on, like, stop. Like, women are just the worst. Uh, it is It is definitely something that uh, it will be talked about probably for the next month. And but I know there's some people that live there that had a big problem with it because of all the money that's spent when there's, you know, people that are suffering when, you know, their own police and fire members, you know, don't make that much. And, and, you know, people in the medical profession and things like that are suffering and, you know, but yet $55 million can be spent on a wedding. I think you get that from any government, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at the way um, even the U.S. presidents, they get lambasted when they take a vacation. Uh, yeah, they, they go to Hawaii for a weekend. Uh, like when Barack Obama went to Hawaii for, I think it was like two weeks or something like that. Yeah. People really got down on him for taking a vacation, going home, basically. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think I think we lose sight of the fact that these are people just like anybody else, whether just because they have a, a fancy title or whatever it is, you know, they still are people. And if you work 365 days straight, guarantee you'd burn out. And yeah. I'm sorry, but I don't want a president who's burnt out. I mean, it's bad enough that we have a president that is a burnout, let alone one that gets burnt out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Those phone calls in the middle of the night and those things that you have to do. I mean, you're always on call as president, basically. I mean, it's like being a parent, right? Like you're on, you're on all 24 hours a day. If something goes on, you could be woken up at any time during the night and you have to deal with whatever kind of emergency is happening. That's what it's like. Yes, you have people that help, but yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, mean, I, don't I don't know what the, the royal family's um, responsibility is to governing, I, if they have any at all. But uh, yeah, I don't I, know. I'm assuming that they have to have some kind of responsibilities. I mean, there's got to be something that they do. <laughs> it's pretty bad. There's got to be something that they do. <laughs> it's like we're talking about hear. celebrities. Yeah, you just don't hear about what it is they do other than travel around the world 
and then oh hey we happen to be here so we're gonna do something good by taking a couple pictures waving our hands and smiling I well know. i think um what was that movie um was it called the queen it, and uh, there was another one about when margaret thatcher was the prime minister and that was interesting to watch. I mean, it's really the prime minister who as would be like the leader and the mm-hmm. royal family just really kind of sits back and says, yeah, do what you yay do. or nay, like, I like what you're doing or don't do that or, but that was very interesting to watch those movies to see really how it worked. But, um, the, the last, the last, uh, um, Royal that actually had any say in anything wasn't it King George, King George the Third, or something like that? With during World War One, I? I think they had a lot more. Yeah, back I think then. That was the last time the royal family really had a say in what went on in world politics. Yeah, I might be wrong. I, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a European historian by any means whatsoever. But at the same time, you know, I just, it's, it's confusing what, what it is that they actually do. I know, right? Yeah, I know. I don't really know either. But, you know, if, if you're interested, watch those movies. They It was really interesting, actually, watching those movies and how it worked. But it'll be interesting when Charles takes over and then, you know, we've had a monarchy for so long. Um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But, yeah, I was just really kind of surprised by, uh, by the way uh, people talked. And, again, I'm just, just looking at this and people just aren't aware and, it was specifically women. Like women are just, come on, double standards, ladies, come on. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be judged and you want this and that, but yet you don't hesitate in throwing out the insults or judging or whatever. Come on. Like, come on. This is why we're not where we want to be, ladies. Come on. Like, <laughs> jeez. Now you've been doing some stuff uh, in the in the women's community in the last uh, in the last month. I think uh, what weren't you part of a group that did some online stuff lately? Uh, yeah, there was a summit that was going on that I had been asked to be a part of um, because I'd done a um, I'd done a live in a group, and she was one of the group members on Facebook, and she had contacted me saying, you know, um, I loved. I love the live that you did and I've, you know, I checked you out and, you know, you just seem, this would be great. Uh, Every year I do this find your force um, summit online summit. And I'd like to talk to you. And I guess she had never talked to anybody that had been in online radio and, and all of that. So it was people that, and we've seen them before and uh, she interviewed uh, via video and, um, asked some questions about where I started my experience and my story and what I've learned and, um, and everybody had something to offer. So, uh, some freebie and yeah, so that was, uh, there was some great, uh, some really interesting videos to watch. So yeah, I was doing that, but I'm looking at some other things too. Um, there's some great things going on right now, but I also see there's some big changes going on. And you know what I'm noticing? Maybe you're seeing this too. Um, it's weird. It's like a second resurgence of this where we started seeing retreats were kind of a big thing. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of died down for a bit. And, and now all of a sudden, like that's all I'm seeing again, like all over is yeah. people that are hosting retreats and putting on retreats. I've been seeing a lot of that, especially in the men's community. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, guys doing their, uh, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but th- there's a few people that have reached out to me. Uh, a really good personal friend, uh, Joe Pardo, he's reached out to me. He's got, he's got a retreat out in uh, New Jersey, I believe. Um, uh, uh, Ryan Mitchler, he's got one out in uh, Utah. Uh, there's a couple that have uh, one down in California that, that they've been, when I say a couple, I mean a couple, a man and woman. Mm. And theirs is more of a, a couple's retreat. Yeah. Um, and th- then I've been seeing a lot of these uh, men's getting back to nature type oh, things. Oh, have you? Go out and you do like, 
it's not a course, but it's like you're out in the wilderness, you're surviving off the land, you're, you're, you know, getting back to being that, that paleolithic type man, the manly man. Yeah. So I've been seeing a lot of those, those come, uh, uh, kind of pop up lately. And I thought they were really kind of cool. I, I would love to go to one of them, uh, yeah. just, just to, just to experience it, just to see what they're about. Um, I think they're a great thing. Yeah, I am seeing a lot of those come up and I'm looking at some of them and I'm like, wow, some of them, yeah, are looking really good. I can't do the ones where, you know, I'm looking at some too, they're, they're like, oh, you're going to get up at like stupid o'clock and you're going to like meditate and then you're going to like do yoga for a while. I'm like, I cannot be doing that. <laughs> I have nothing against those things, but I, this is, this is just not me. I'm just too, I just. I like my quiet times, but my quiet times look a little bit different than that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, the ones that I guess were really interesting to me were the survivor style. Like you, you see, you, you've seen the show survivor. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They're kind of like that. You go out and you're, you're, it's a week long retreat. You're out there, you're surviving. You have to rely on each other. You have to learn about each other, find out what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. You have to work as a team. So you guys can, basically do this thing for a week and a week doesn't seem like very long until shit breaks down. Oh yeah. And uh, I mean, just, just from experience with the military and knowing what it was like to be out in the field for a week with a group of guys, when, when leadership breaks down, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty hell raising. It, it, it can be exciting. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Good way. Yeah. So, well, I think you have to find what works for you. I mean, there's some of them I like the location, but I'm not in, but I'm not, you know, like I said, get up really with the sun and meditate and I have meditated. Yes, I do. But I, that's not really my, I've done yoga too, lots. It's, that's not, it's not a regular part of my life. So, you know, you've got to find the retreat that works for you. I like the idea of, of, um, of going away for a few days and just like getting out of Dodge and, and, um, and, you know, cause it always provides a new perspective, you know, a change is as good as a vacation. So if you can go away for two, three days and you do something different, it's just as good as a, as a, as a vacation away. And, but you have to find the one that works for you. And I just know that that's, that not one that would work for me. If I could go to one where, yeah, we're going to get and we're going to talk and we're going to engage and you can be yourself and we're not going to, you know, make you be like, this sounds really <laughs> like non PC, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm just not that way. I'm not the vegan meditating yoga. I'm just not like it. So you got to find the one that works for you. Uh, you know, huh? You're not a hipster. I'm not a hipster. I'm not a tree hugging vegan. And there's, <laughs> I've seen some great ones in great locations led by fantastic people. Um, but I've also seen people that go to those and they end up really not liking them. And some of them can be really costly because they're going, trying to be something uh, maybe that they're not try a smaller one, try a local one before you spend thousands of dollars going away to these places and you end up finding out I'm not the person that can get up at stupid o'clock and, you know, howl to the sun and yoga and, and do all that stuff. Maybe you're someone that likes to be more engaged. I know someone that went away for a 10 day silent, it was a silent retreat for 10 days. I would die. I would die. So you know, maybe try doing that at home for two days, like not talking or making a sound for two days before you go and and uh, spend a ton of money. But, oh, my God, yeah, these events that I'm seeing, I'm seeing things are more outwardly rather than inwardly. People yeah. are finding their their themselves. Their, people are going inward by going outward. So these events are huge. I think we're kind of done. I, I Like there's that self-help hangover and i know i have that personally yeah i think people want to have experiences now <laughs> i know that's what i want I, I agree i think people do want experiences rather than i it, before you saw 
I mean, we, we've seen a shift. It, really, we have seen this shift. Um, two years ago, webinars were the thing. Everybody signed up for a million different webinars or sold on whatever course was going to make you a million dollars, whatever it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people, that's how they're, they've launched to their right. millions. And then, uh, then we started seeing this whole <clears throat> agency kick. Now it wasn't so much about webinars and making money with webinars. Now it was start your own agency, do, you know, Facebook ads, Instagram, Twitter, all this stuff. Yeah. Create an agency that, that became a big thing for oh, a short period of time, about a year or so. And now yeah. I think we're starting to see a, a shift of more, not so much online persona, but Hey, let's get together. Let's meet in person. Let's, let's do something together to where we can impact our lives uh, in a way that it's more personable. Yeah. I think, I think that's a really good direction. I, I really do. I think it's going to definitely foster uh, a better community. Mm. And foster a better uh, relationship building skills. Cause yeah. now it's not just about why well, I can be whoever I want online. We are going to meet at some point. You have to be, there's there's almost a built-in accountability there so, yeah so you better get a profile picture that really looks like you because i don't want to be surprised because <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. i've had that happen i've seen that <laughs> Woo, that's fun <laughs> <laughs> like really that's you huh. yeah. <laughs> get that profile pictures right people before you go to these events but yeah, I think so. And you know what? That just goes to show it goes all the way back again to um, that old school um, making things happen. And yeah. it just goes back to that. I think people are burnt out from trying to be flashy and stand out. I mean, online will never go away ever because the beauty of uh, the Internet is that we can reach so many people now. Mm. But um I think after a while it's people are trying to find, maybe that's what's happening is this balance is trying to emerge between in person. I know I'm really wanting that. Like yeah. I am kind of, you know, I've limited my online or I've tried to be really deliberate in what I do. And I'm still, I'm trying to figure that out still. I mean, this, this, what we're doing stands out the most so it's kind of like get rid of the other and now trying to refocus on that, how to make that better. Yeah. I've always, I've always taken the stance that if, if uh, the person you see online is always going to be this person that you see in person. Um, we have good days. We have bad days. Everybody does. Every day isn't a good day. That's right. And, uh, online it it's, it's like that. I, I do. I now obviously you're not, you have to have some sort of decorum when you're posting stuff online, throwing out, yeah. you know, certain things, you know, leave the family drama alone. Don't, don't bring that online. Nobody else wants to see that crap. But at the same time, you know, I'll post something like, um, Hey, I'm just not feeling it today. Just not feeling it. And, and it's not, it's not be to be taken like, uh, you know, like, Oh, he's doing the poor me thing. It's to be taken like, Hey, how many others you have to go to work in the morning and just like, nah, nah, not today. Not going to happen. Don't want to do it. But we get up and we do it anyways. And then we talk about it to our families when we get home at the end of the day. Yeah. And then tomorrow's another day and we feel totally different. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. And, and, but I find interesting too, is that you'll post, you post something like that and people will either feel like you need so much help or sometimes yeah. you just post a general thing and they're like trying to like make, turn your life around for you. And you're like, no, it's really just like, it's just, oh, yeah. I just made a statement. I'm not like, yeah, uh, it's very interesting how different people take things. Sometimes it's like, sometimes I'm just posting something. It doesn't mean. Just killed my first mosquito of the year. Uh, <gasps> <laughs> fucking mosquitoes. I don't know. I hate them. I hate them. But they're necessary. You know what you uh, do? You buy some uh, mouthwash and put it in a good sprayer and spray it all over the perimeter oh, yeah. of your deck and your lawn. Oh, mouthwash. I heard that. 
And even the cheap stuff will work. So go to the box store and load up on some big bottles of some cheap mouthwash and spray it. Just spray it everywhere. Mm, I can do that. Do so that. I, got, I got some amazing news <gasps> for my his topic for tonight. Oh, black flies. That's awful. Yeah. Yeah, black flies are nasty too. We get yeah, we don't really get them too much here. They take a chunk out of you. Horse yeah. flies. Horse flies, yeah. yeah. Um, so, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend. We all know this. But even more exciting than that this year <laughs> is the fact that my daughter, my 18-year-old daughter, is graduating high school. So I have successfully not screwed up. <laughs> that is exciting exciting it's it's like uh can you believe it like can you believe it though do you have a daughter that's graduating high school not really because you know i was sitting here i was i was driving home and it's weird how these things hit you because i'm not the kind of guy that sits there and gets emotional about a lot of things but i'm driving home tonight from work and i just i i had this memory of my little girl she must have been, I don't know, six or seven years old eating pizza. And I happened to be eating pizza for dinner. So, you know, stopped, grabbed one of those small six inch pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. And I'm, I'm driving home and I just and I, I, I just got this memory. It just like hit me all of a sudden of this little seven year old little girl with this big giant piece of pizza that was like wider than her face <laughs> and, and this pizza sauce all over her face. And, and it was like, she's not that little girl no more. She's, she's a grown, she is a woman. She is going to go to school and I am actually wearing her school's colors. It's the SDSU Jackrabbits. And, and I, as I was sitting there thinking about it, I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. This is absolutely nuts. I, I guess I really hadn't thought about it the weight of it hadn't hit me until today yeah and my wife she's been breaking down in hysterics and is just anxiety ridden for like the last year but for me it was like what i don't understand why you're having all these problems i never (laughs) i couldn't figure this out and she's like my little girl she's my baby she's this she's that i don't want her to leave blah 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 like she's gonna leave she has to leave that's the yeah. nature that's how nature you know progresses yeah. and she's always yeah but she's my baby and then today i'm driving home eating that pizza and i and i have this memory of my little girl eating this big piece of pizza thinking that's my little girl yeah I don't want to go so far away yeah what the hell am i doing what, what am i thinking she's gonna be leaving yeah. <laughs> so, so is, she, kinda- is it that far from home? It, well, it's about 300 miles, so it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, 3, 360, something like that. But, yeah, it's not too far, so you could get there, you know, relatively easily, spend a weekend, come home, go to work. It's yeah. not a big deal. But it, it's just the whole thought, though. I mean, we actually did it. We actually got a kid through high school and didn't screw him up. Yeah. Well, you That's don't know that yet. <laughs> well, well, it probably remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, but, you know, she's she's doing everything. She, I mean, good for you. It's just, it's like, wow. What's little, she gonna take? I believe she's going in for was it nurse practitioner or clinical nursing. Or I don't know. It's some something in nursing field. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Need Maybe more need way. nurses. Thank God for the people that can do that job. No, no kidding. <sighs> well, yeah, wow. that's all I got. That's all that's all I had is I just wanted to brag about my little girl going to college. That's that's all that, and graduating high school. That's... Me, in in a day right now where a lot of people are on this bandwagon of, well, you don't need college. All you gotta do is take this online course and you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hear people saying that and I just can't help it. I got to call bullshit. It's just college isn't just about learning. Uh, it's, it's also about experiencing life. It's about finding who you are. It's about discovering 
yourself. There's so much that goes on at college that you don't have the time or the opportunity to do when you're out of college. Uh You don't have mom and dad looking over your shoulder because when you're in high school, mom and dad make the rules. Where college, you get to make your rules. You get to, you get somewhat. Well, somewhat, but at the same, but you do though. You get to, you get to experience life in a way that you don't get to experience it while you're in high school. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And you have a bit more freedom. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's easing you out. It's opening that world a little bit more like, okay. And you know, as well as I know, once you're out of that setting, life takes off, boom, gets, it's off to the races and you don't have time to experience things the way you did when you're, when all you had to do is worry about studying for that exam, reading those 14 chapters before the next freaking class. It definitely changes for sure because everything's slower. You know, your world is very small when you're in school in high school. It's very small, you know, relative to, to the rest of the world. So, yeah, when you do that, yeah, I moved away. I moved to a different city and I went to college and it was like, whoa, then yeah, it's like, here we go. Giddy up. Like now you there's all these things you got to think about and oh yeah, it's different. You know, college for me was, was a party. It really was. Um, I can't say that I was the greatest student in the world, but at the same time, I wasn't the worst student either. I didn't get kicked out of school. Yeah. So that was a plus. <laughs> I never made the dean's list, but I didn't necessarily Same. need to. I just, you know, I, I, but I had such a great time, and you know that without that, without that experience, honestly, I don't believe I would have been able to find myself. I really don't. I think my college experience was different. It wasn't like a typical. I went to like a city college, so it wasn't like college, college or university. Right. So I didn't have that typical, you know, I didn't have sororities. Like we don't have that here. So it's very different. The experience is very different here. So and so I didn't live like there was no campus for me to live, live on. Um, so, yeah, it was very different. But um, it was an experience for sure because it was brand new. I was, you know, newly on my own. And so, yeah, it was different for sure. But that's exciting. So this is your first one. You got another one though. That's going to be graduating. Actually, I have uh, another one. She, he's at, she's actually the same age as your son. So they'll yeah. actually be going through the graduation process at the same time, which is next pretty year. exciting. Yeah. Oh, yours is next year. That's right. My daughter's just, she's an October baby. She actually had to skip a year of school when she started because she was born four days too late to start school. So oh, she's a, she is a year behind your son yet. Oh, the same age. Just. Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, oh, so, it's going to be so easy. So easy with a boy here. Put the suit on, put some shoes on. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> like, I can't believe how expensive this is though. Holy. Oh, Christ. it's ridiculous. It's really, really crazy. It's crazy. Uh, we, uh, so we've and got, if you have a girl, it's worse. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, what's weird is, so we have this whole party planned, right? This, this graduation party. And uh, I've, I've got family coming from Minnesota. Corinne's got family coming from all over the country and to see, to, to see her graduate and then, you know, go to this, this graduation. Wow. Party. Well, my daughter, she says, well, is it okay if I cut out of my party early because a friend of mine's having her party also, and I want to go see her go to her party. Like, no, uh, uh-uh. like, like, what? <laughs> we've spent damn near two thousand dollars to get this freaking party together. You're going to your fucking party, <laughs> and why isn't your friend coming to your fucking party? <laughs> why is she having her own party? Apparently, damn her parents spent twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god, eh? It's insane how much money this is costing just to get your kid out of the damn house. Okay, not quite like yeah, that. But you didn't have to have a party. Come on. Oh no, we did. If you, my family, oh, my family and her family, they're coming from hundreds of miles away. Yeah, I can't believe that. It's a graduation. I know from high school. I know. Wow, quite the family. 
Well, you know, Germans, Norwegians, they like God, to My family won't even fucking drive across town if I can come and see me. <laughs> let alone fucking well, see, that's travel, the problem. like see, miles. We, we only see these people like once every couple of years. So when we get together, it's got to be a party. Wow. Uh, yeah. The, the family that I've got that live in the same town as I do, I maybe see them once every couple of months. Yeah, I don't see him. Very well, that's well. almost sort of like mine. I mean, unless there's a lot of family birthdays, like really close together. That's really, you know, when we see each other, like when it's somebody's birthday or, you know, once in a while, it's like, hey, we haven't gotten together for a while. Like, let's get together for a barbecue or, you know, like all the major holidays and stuff like that. We'll we get together. So. But, yeah, we could go a while. I mean, we could go a month for sure without. You know, but I'm impressed. Uh, that's really impressive. I think that's freaking awesome for a, for a high school grad that they're going to travel far like that. Yeah. It's, wow. It, it's it's well, my it's it's just what it is. You know, she's uh, the oldest granddaughter, so they want to see her. She is paving the way. She is. She is definitely doing something, and then going to college, which. None of the other two older boys in our family, they neither one of them decided to go to college. So huh. uh, it is uh, it is what it is. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that whole prom thing. Oh, you know, we never had that here. Now we've adopted that. We're adopting all these American freaking traditions now. Now there's prom and then there's grad. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, when I graduated, you – Went to the ceremony, got your certificate, you went to the dance, that was it. Done. Over. Well, I like to think of it as the the American parents are sharing the pain of having teenage <sighs> children. That's what we're doing. Oh, we're just sharing right. that experience. That's crazy. I'm like, when the hell did this prom thing happen? I asked some of my friends at kids, oh, prom's coming. I'm like, school isn't even over yet. Like, what are you talking about? And then they explain this to me, and I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. And what they're doing and they get the limo and they have to get their nails done and their makeup done and their hair done and the dress. And then, but they need two dresses. And I'm like, Oh my God, I love <laughs> my son. Like, this is great. <laughs> All right. Well, are we ready to get into this hot topic that we've been, teasing? we've been teasing for like a week and a half. <laughs> yeah, Totally. Yes, definitely. How come we don't have our music between our things? Uh, because I work 90 hours a week. <laughs> you have to stop that. I'm trying. I'm really working on that. You really have to stop. <laughs> June 4th. June 4th, I have my appointment to hopefully uh, I'll get some uh, information that will set me off on a new path. Ooh, nice. Yes, it's coming June up. 4th. Nice. Yeah, I want to let people know we're getting into our uh, hot topic here. Ladies and gentlemen, put the kids to sleep. We're getting into our hot topic. <laughs> yeah, because I really want to know what this poll was. That uh, This poll is going to disappoint. We haven't done a poll for a long time. And the reason why we haven't done a poll is because we really haven't had a topic like this that could cause, you know, some kind of an uproar or stir. So this yeah, is one yeah. of those topics that we're really kind of, you know, I was, ex I was, uh, you know, there was a couple of guys that actually answered, answered the question because they happened to be standing there with their wives when I asked them. Oh. And um, <laughs> um a few elbows to the gut, you know, it, it was okay. It was all done and fun, but uh, I actually approached the, the couples first because I figured it was safer to approach a couple with this. That mm -hmm. way the, uh, that way she wouldn't, the woman wouldn't feel so, you know, I don't know, weirded out, creeped out, whatever. Yeah. Some guy coming up and asking, Hey, I got a question for you. You, you got a minute, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> oh God, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm curious to know what you asked because, you know, our hot topic about taboo career choices for women, there's a lot of things in that arena. Was, I don't know if there really were uh, because I did, I tried to do some research and nothing really came up. 
what? Nothing really came up. When I was doing research, nothing really came up. What did you Google? I put, I put uh, tab. I tried to Google taboo career choices for women, just like that, right? And then I get 27 careers that women excel at. And <laughs> I was like, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, oh, my God. That's funny. I mean, and that's the kind of shit that I was getting, like careers for women. And I was like, no, no, no. Taboo. Taboo. Google doesn't understand the word taboo, apparently. No. So. It's going to give you like a definition or something. Yeah. So I, that didn't go very far. But uh, the ladies that I talked to at Sam's Club, they seem to have some ideas. And they were very different than what their men counterparts thought. So <laughs> we're going to get into that. So you did your our poll at Sam's Club. Yeah, because I, well, I couldn't cool. get Google to give me anything good. I, I couldn't get shit from Google for one in my life. Google failed me. So I went to the people. Uh, go to the people. This is always what um, we want to do. Go to the people. I went to the people. Okay. The people did not let me down. Oh, love it. There was one que- there was one lady when I asked what kind of careers would you consider taboo for women? And Ooh. he said that uh, midwife was a taboo career. Whoa. And I thought, really? I don't, I don't, I don't see how that's taboo. But if you look at today's culture versus, I mean, there is kind of a resurgent of the whole midwife thing going on. But it depends on what circle you're running it. And oh, was, for sure. And she was an older lady that uh, when I say older, I would say she's probably in her mid 60s to early 70s. And she felt that being a midwife was a taboo career choice, although she had been one when she was in her 30s. Oh, so she she knows what she had to deal with then. Right. So we're talking 40 years ago around there for her. So right. that's, I could see her coming up with that then as a taboo career topic. That was, career the, choice. One, that was the one that kind of threw me off the most. Other than Ooh. that, everybody, everybody would say oh, escort services. Um, yeah. Uh, strippers. Uh, one person said happy ending massage. Uh, <laughs> happy ending massage. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that was not expected, but she came from some. That one actually came from someone who worked at Sam's Club, who was actually a really good friend of mine. So I kind of felt safe asking her that question. Uh, yeah. That. Yeah. But the, huh. the majority of them said stripper or escort. Yeah. Or hooker, you know, prostitution. Yeah. Like yeah. And I, I just. I don't, I don't, uh, that, that's really as far as I can, I mean, that's really all people could really think of. I, there really wasn't anything else. Midwife was the only one that threw me off. It would totally throw me off too. Well, it did. So. It did. I think that, um, I, but you know, I think that there's a lot of things out there that people don't really know about. Now there's one uh, friend I have on Facebook that, Oh yeah. Why did we not think of porn actress? That's one that never came to my mind when I was thinking about this either. That is so bizarre. Cause for me necessarily taboo though. I mean, Oh, porn, porn in general is taboo. Porn. I think in general. a porn star well, it's more, I think, Porn is more socially acceptable than it used to be. Uh, well, I think it depends on the circles you run in. There again, it's very true. Very because true. if you're like you know involved, if you're in a, like a lot of feminist type circles, um, they're looking they're looking down on that. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of career choices too that. People would think, uh, you know, aren't like, I, so I have a Facebook friend that does these retreats called back to the body. And it's okay. all about, you know, for women to get back to the body. 
and, you know, and, and loving their bodies and not hating on their bodies. And, and some of the pictures I see, I think, wow, I, I'm actually quite surprised that, because there's always assholes, right, that these don't get reported, and that she can continue to post some of these pictures. Now, they're not like, all out pornographic, but I mean, they're quite revealing. Um, so, you know, there's different jobs and things out there. So this is what she does a few times a year. She runs these retreats and they're in Tuscany and they're in Hawaii and they're in Florida and they're all over the place. And, um, she's got a team of people that help. And so I think something like that, someone that helps women in, in terms of sexuality and all that stuff, I think that would be a taboo thing. But I think, yeah, what people would think about, yeah, prostitute, escort, uh, you know, it's not all pretty woman out there. Yeah, right. Right. It's not like, but that is much more of an escort type thing because a prostitute is strictly for money and an escort is an escort. I mean, and sometimes it does turn into that, but sometimes it doesn't. I'd say more times than not, it doesn't. Um, I've yeah. never hired an escort, but I've known people who have run escort services and I've known people who have worked for escort services and uh, they, they've always been pretty, uh, pretty strict about the policy of no sex. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think uh, I think it all depends on the the business, to be honest with you, uh, and the girls working in that business. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of it, they just they do want someone to be there with them or, you know, act. So I was reading this article from an ex escort woman. And she was saying how they had different, you know, if they phoned up, it was like most of them wanted the girlfriend experience. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, what is that? And that was really just uh, an escort just acting. They just want them to act like their girlfriend. Go out on a date. Go out on a date and be close and hold hands and be like you would, like you were in a relationship. And that was really just something that they were missing. Right. I could see that, uh, especially, uh, especially some of those people who maybe uh, men who are out on the road a lot for their jobs or whatever, they they just want some kind of company. So they dial up an escort service, have a, have someone come over to hang out with, watch TV with whatever it is. Not a lonely men. So, you know, I guess it's not, and a lot of them, it's not, she was saying it was, it was a lot of lonely men. It wasn't what you would think. Right. Whereas I think mostly women would think, Oh yeah, the guy just wants something. Um, but a lot of it was, yeah, they're just, lonely just wanted some female attention they just wanted somebody to be like their girlfriend but yeah they're really watched girls that built work through these agencies so then you think why do women resort then to being a prostitute why not go to an escort agency where they're safer they can determine whether it there's sex or not you can get paid very well as an escort oh yeah oh definitely um, I've heard, like I said, I've, I've never like just through my friends who have either owned a company or worked in the companies I've heard, you know, guys have paid as much as $1,200 for, for a okay. date, you know, just, and it's not typically all night. It's usually like three or four hours and they've made 1200 bucks. So, you know, it's, uh, but then again, you look at, well, why would they switch to prostitution? Well, that that lure of more money you get especially when you get some of these guys that well maybe they started off thinking yeah they just want some company well hey what would it cost me to get this you know how much more can i pay you to do this for me type mm -hmm. of thing so i think there's there's a lot of gray area especially since that it's not a chaperone date it's not something that you've got other people around you so you don't know what happens when that door closes mm -hmm. um, and then you get, when you get into the prostitution angle of it, um, I don't believe, I honestly don't believe any woman who has any type of self-respect whatsoever 
sets out to become a prostitute. I think that is a career choice that is made out of desperation, out of not knowing where else to turn. Um, it's easy. Yeah, it's it. I mean, it's 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 it. it well, it's like I said, it's easy money. You know, it's they, fast. It's now. Yep. As long yeah. as they got a place to go and the guy's got some money, it doesn't. It's not like they're going to be their time is going to be taken up all night long for thirty forty dollar trick. Yeah. You know, 10, 15 minutes they're in, they're out, they're going on to their next one. And I mean, I I'm sure there's some that charge a whole lot more than thirty or forty dollars. I've never hired a prostitute, so I don't know what the going rate is. But, <laughs> but <laughs> if uh if I can't imagine knowing knowing the way most guys are the, the nervousness that goes on and all that kind of stuff that happens in that type of setting. Cause you know, it's illegal. I can't imagine it lasting more than a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I guess it's just, I totally agree with you. I think that, uh, I don't think any woman that would purposely set out to choose prostitution as a career choice. Absolutely. Now there's another one and that remember that video I sent you a long time ago about that woman she was totally naked and she yeah. was talking Awesome dude. um she oh and I've been watching what she's doing she's like she is like speaking out and she I've been wa- following her and she does Facebook live she was at an event one time in this church basement where they had a gathering and she was there man that she is smart she can really stand up and defend her point with a whole bunch of men in that room, whole bunch of men who claim that they are, you know, God fearing and all of that. And uh, she, she explains herself very well and knows the Bible very well to be able to come back to them, you know, and trying to dog her. And, um, but she runs a phone sex company. And she, so she is very much like, you know, she does these videos and she's talking about, um, you know, women's sexuality and, and that's where your part, your power lies as a woman, if you are in charge of it. And that, so she has this phone sex company and she's like, look at, she's showing, she even shows like, look, look what I made, like, look what I made. And you can too. Like, why don't you use that ability? There's nothing wrong with that. And you're in control and you're on the phone and so that's another taboo. Yeah, I you know I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. I didn't know phone sex operators still existed. To be honest with you, um, just mainly because uh, you know we we got Snapchat, we got all yeah. these other things nowadays, texting and sexting and this that and the other. Well, and there may be another way that she does it, but that's sort of like what her company is like. But sure. um, I so remember. I guess- commercials though back when i was a kid you know late the, night yeah those 499 they still exist 499 for the first minute 99 yeah. cents additional minute i i remember getting chewed out when i was a young guy uh i didn't know what they were i didn't re- i didn't understand the concept of 499 a minute and 99 cents each additional minute i didn't know so oh. I, I called one and my dad got the phone bill and it was like a lot <laughs> oh my god and you know my back this back then those 900 numbers they were not cheap i don't remember what the phone bill was but i do know that it was enough for him to kick my ass from one end of the house to the other end of the house it was, no, it was don't. So, <laughs> uh, so i have experienced a phone sex operator's voice in my ear and I didn't know what I was doing. She probably thought that it was some kind of joke, but uh, I, I couldn't have been more than 11 or 12 at the time. Oh my God, really? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Live and learn, I guess. <laughs> oh, what a boy. What a boy. Yeah, well, they still exist. I mean... Oh, I'm Last sure I was watching TV. some month up late watching TV, they're like other people in your area. 
Those are this is what they're like. saying. Meet new friends. Yeah, Call are- and talk yeah. on the phone. Yeah, the party line thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've seen those when I've been staying. At- that's funny is because when you're staying at a hotel, that's when you always seem to see those types of advertisements. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have television like everybody else has got television. I don't have cable TV. Oh, okay. Like that. So, yeah, so, you probably won't be seeing those then. I don't see television. But uh, when I go out on the road and I stay at a hotel, we watch television. And usually the television stays on all night long because we're just too lazy to freaking get up to go yeah. the damn changer because whatever reason. I don't know. It always seems to stay on. And you'll wake up sometime like around three o'clock in the morning with the TV still on. You finally get pissed off enough to go actually turn it off. And yeah. that's you, when you see them. You, you see them about somewhere between two and three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think some people, I think that's probably one of the least taboo ones. Yeah, I that is definitely probably the least taboo. Uh, the most taboo probably being, well, like Lynn said, porn star or, or even. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. But we t- completely skipped over strippers. We already talked yeah. about sports. <laughs> I've got I've got an audience over here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were just yes. this, like or escorts, and I said we just discussed escorts. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, but strippers, strippers, you know. So here's I got a funny story to talk about real quick about strippers. Okay, Do actually, it. it's not about strippers. It's about my brother. Yes, this conversation. Yes. So we were partying when I was in college. My brother lived with us for a little while before he went into the army. Uh, it was kind of a, just a transition type of thing. He came, stayed with us. He went into the army. He was gone. Well, while we were <laughs> while we were partying one night, uh, my wife and him got into this deep conversation about children. And he says, if I have a daughter, if she wants to be a stripper, that's a that's a perfectly legitimate occupation. <laughs> so, now he go we over the few years, you know, he goes down, he moves to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and him and his wife get, you know, they they have their first child. It's a girl. Ah. they come home on leave for something and my wife could not wait to ask him no doubt do you think it's still a respectful respectable occupation for your daughter to become a stripper he says are you fucking nuts (laughs) (laughs) so yeah and every now and then we still kind of bring that up just to just to make sure that he, you know, hasn't changed his mind or, or his position. Yeah. Uh, he, so uh, he was all pro stripper uh, in the beginning until he had a daughter. And now he's not so much pro stripper. Yeah. It, his perspective changed. Did he stop going to those places? Oh, uh, see, that's always interesting. No, I don't know. I know I didn't, uh, but <laughs> Um, I would not want my daughters to become strippers, but I can't say that. Why? Uh, why? Well, let yes. me. See. Hmm. Because it's just not a healthy environment. Okay. I don't. You know the fact of what they do. Those. Those. Okay. So, the women who do this, the women who are strippers, they are physically fit. They're strong women. Very strong women. The things that they do while they're dancing on the pole, if you take away the fact that they're naked, Uh just look at the, the athletic ability of what they are doing. It is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So, I mean, I can respect the art of what they're doing. I, and and I'm going to call it an art. And if there's people out there that don't like that, I call it an art. I don't care. I respect the art of what they're doing. Uh Mm-hmm fact that they're taking their clothes off now what they're not they're just adding another uh they're, they're just adding a fantasy to that art form mm-hmm. so 
do I look at it and think, wow, that's dirty. That's nasty. That's no, I don't. But at the same time, I look at it as a profession where the, the people who are in it, it's not a lot. There's not a whole lot of longevity. There's not, it's not a healthy lifestyle because you're around bars. Uh, and when you're around bars, a lot of alcoholism starts playing into it. A lot of drugs starts playing into it. So I look at it from that aspect, not what they're doing, but the, the environment that they're doing it in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the, I think it's the environment that makes it difficult and not necessarily what they're doing. Um, and, and the lifestyle that they can be led into. Absolutely. For sure. Now, when, if you look at it in different places of the world, it's, it's d- very different. There's strict rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there, you know, it, it's very much looked at as more of an art than, you know, the seedy side of it. So it definitely does change. It definitely is the environment. Right. I, and I do, res- I respect the ladies who go out there and don't play the same old trashy music. <laughs> you every if i have to listen to welcome to the fucking jungle one more time in the strip club <laughs> oh, oh my god that's a popular uh, song is it? <laughs> it it is that one and pour some sugar on me of course Ma! <laughs> <laughs> that's another popular song um <laughs> i can see that funny. yeah i mean it's just but every now and then you'll go into one of these clubs and you'll have a dancer who sees the art form of the dance more so than playing to the audience. She's, she's creating a routine, mm-hmm. she's dancing a routine and, and where you'll see it, where some of the girls they're playing to the, the guys, they just, Hey, give me that dollar. Give me that dollar. Give me that dollar or whatever it is. Yeah. Then you have those girls that are up there performing the ones that go up there and perform those are the ones you you almost enjoy just just sitting back and watching. It's, yeah. it's about whatever. I mean, it's not about sitting on Sniffer's Row and throwing dollars up on the on the stage. <laughs> it's sitting back and enjoying a well, show. Well, they really they put uh, they put their all into costumes and they really you know Wait, yeah. Stop. He said costumes. Well, they start off with costumes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the more upscale, the more classy establishment, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Down in Dallas, Texas, uh, one of my really good close friends, Rhett, he, uh, he, that's what his job was. He was a manager of, well, he was a consultant for, or for strip clubs. He would go, travel around the country, you know, from Las Vegas to New York to Dallas, Texas. I met him when he was in Dallas. And, he kind of showed me the back behind the scenes look at what goes on at a strip club. And that was really interesting because it's nothing like what you had imagined it to be. It's absolutely nothing. Uh, Going backstage. uh, Now, mind you, this is, this is what I thought was kind of odd. So the women are out on stage taking their dang clothes off for everybody to see. Yeah. As soon as you go back behind stage, though, don't go into there. That's the ladies' locker room. Don't go into there. That's you know private area. It's very, very uh, private. There's a lot of uh, um, you know, discretion behind the stage, type of thing. So th- it's a it's a different world once you go back behind stage. Well, you know, yeah. So then it's different, right? So yeah. I think that kind of shows their power in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I'm on stage. Yeah. I am in charge, and this is what I'm. And I'm off. This is different. Yeah. I, I have my boundaries. This is private. I'm. Yeah. I, I just, but I thought it was, I thought it was kind of a cool look though behind stage because over off to the side they had like a rehearsal area where girls were rehearsing moves that they were going to do and stuff like that and. You don't think about that when you go into these smaller, trashy dive clubs. Yeah, there's none of that. Yeah. They're absolutely I mean, girls are taking their clothes off and then they're going over into another corner and they're putting their clothes back on. There's no room 
off to the back. And if there is a dressing room after the back, chances are it's full of liquor and drugs. And then you go into an upscale club and it's like, wow, this is, this is different. This is, you don't, you don't have a bunch of chairs up at the front row of a, of the stage. You have lounge chairs out in the back with tables and, you know, bottle service and all these different things going on. It's. Yeah. I think it definitely changes how it looks. I mean, it's just like playboy, right? You know, when he started that, he just, he made it different. He, he showed it in a different way. He was all about being classy and not just having it all out there. It was the way that he depicted things. And I think, yeah, it's the same thing. If you're going to be part of this more upscale club, a lot of them I've heard as I knew a couple strippers, a lot of them were, um, we don't want drug addicts here. Like that's not the way it is here. Like we have standards that, you know, we don't want, if you got a drug problem, then you're not here. We don't want that. Well, Rhett, so um, Rhett used to test all the girls, every single one of the girls, when they came to work, uh, when they came to work for that club, they had to take a drug test and then they would have random drug tests periodically to keep working there. Yeah, but the, it, but you also have to understand the girls that were working at these upscale clubs, they were making twenty five hundred dollars a night. It wasn't like they're making a couple hundred bucks and going home. I mean, uh, at the Diamond Club, there was this one girl. She uh, I, I cannot remember her name to save my life, but she she was she had made nine grand in a night in that she was kind of that ga- that girl that the headliner, she was the headline girl. Mm-hmm. And she would make $9,000, $10,000 in a night. Uh, she mm-hmm. would, they had a upper balcony in this club where it was all private areas. So you'd have a lot of like the Dallas Cowboys, uh, different, you know, actors coming in and they'd have their yeah. private roped off areas and stuff like that. They would, they would, you know, <laughs> have her come up and just spend a little bit of time with kind of like an escort, just come up here and sit with us and hand her a grand. So it was yeah. like, that's the kind of clubs that when you go to those clubs, though, you're watching a performance. You're not watching a stripper. You're watching a performer. Yeah. So, so does that change the perception of people with that? Right. For me, that's the thing for me. It really does because now that's when I started respecting what it is that these girls were doing, even the ones that are at the lower level clubs. I, I respected them a lot because I realized they're not there because they have some kind of sexual fetish and they're just taking their clothes off for guys. They're there because they're selling a fantasy and they're performing in a way that is, is able to make money for them. Yeah. So it's, it it was, it it changed my mind as far as what I thought of them. Yeah. I still have a lot of friends who, who uh, used to be strippers and they're absolutely wonderful women. Absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think they're definitely, yeah. I think, you know, it's amazing what some people do um, when, like you said, making good money, you know, some of them, they're single moms, they get make good money so they can be with their kid during the day when their kids in bed at night, then they go to work and they can provide whatever and they can have a flexible schedule and they can work on their own time or they're paying their way through school or they're saving money so they can do something better. I mean, I think it does. I, I think that the decision then is different and you see the decision when they're doing that. So then the question becomes, oh, I wanted to say, so remember the movie that Demi Moore did? And she was a stripper and like the high end type. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the movie. And what's his face was in it. And he invited her to come to his home to dance. And he, I guess he tried to like, he crossed the line. It was like, no, you don't touch. You don't do anything like that. I think that changed the, the, the perception a little bit of, um, of that world that, you know, not um, all women who work at strip clubs, they're not all these dark, seedy, uh, mm-hmm. drug-pushing places that in some cities, they're, they're, 
they're quite the thing. And these women are choosing to do this and, and they're going on to do other things. Burt Reynolds, that's it. Yeah. Burt Reynolds was in that movie. I think it did take place in Texas or whatever. I can't remember the name of that movie though, but so here's the thing though. There's some people that think there is it empowering or is it disempowering? That's really what it comes down to with, with this whole topic of these career taboo choices. Some people have, are of the mind that um, there is nothing good that comes of this. All these women have zero self-esteem. They couldn't possibly do that. But I think there's so much more to it. Is it empowering or is it disempowering? I think, there, I think it's both. Way, uh, I think it depends on which career choice obviously part for with prostitution it's very disempowering because they're not it, when it when you're talking about prostitution there's always somebody there controlling that situation some pimp or handler or whatever you want to call them so very disempowering on that on that notion uh but when it comes to you know escorts i think it can be empowering to a certain degree um, especially if, uh, if it's a escort that's run, uh, very legit, uh, not, uh, playing in the dark areas, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to strippers, it's extremely empowering for these women because they do have the power. They, when they're on stage, there are very strict rules. You do not touch them. You get, you touch them, you're bounced out of there quicker than you know what the hell happened to you. Um, and they, they have full control of the situation at all times. And with that control, it may not happen overnight, but with that control, it does boost their confidence. It does give them a sense of value and, and self-worth that I don't think that you get from a lot of other careers. Mm. Yeah. It, Cause it, it's very raw and real. Hey, Darren. Uh, yeah, we thought it was an interesting topic. We really could go on and on. Um, yeah. And then Lynn, I think you're right. Depends on, I think it depends on the reasons why you definitely do. Uh, but you know, I think that there's people that get involved high, high up in, in corporate and they get mixed up in all kinds of, um, you know, the white collar crimes and they get, you know, into drugs and all of that. And you can see women that can get into very compromising situations and you hear about that sleeping your way to the top and all of that. I think it's so easy to say that women are, you know, at a disadvantage if they choose a career like that or, um, and like you said, yeah, I think if you just, going to go stand on the corner no one is in their right mind no woman's going i think i'm going to go stand on the corner and uh you know see who i can flag down and uh put that leg out there and yeah i don't think anybody is but what about brothels in vegas don't know anything about them so uh, you know that's i've heard people say that it's legal i've heard people say that it's actually illegal yeah you know i don't know i I really, I guess I could have looked that up, but I, I, I just didn't. I didn't, I didn't either. I just, just prostitution in general. But I think my thing I was looking at is, you know, do we white, do we whitewash it all as anything like that is just bad and it's, it's just sets women back and it just goes against the feminist movement and women who do that are not, you know, not doing anything to further the movement and the equality of women. You know, in when we talk about prostitution, I, we're talking about one of the oldest, if not the oldest career. Oldest profession, the, yeah, apparently. I mean, it's just, I mean, you, you, they look at uh, the ruins of Pompeii and there's, there's literally uh, uh signs on the walls that t say hey this is a brothel this is this is this person's room this is this person's room this yeah. is how much it costs to go into this room yeah. so uh, you're talking a, a profession that is as old as time uh, but then again you look you look at what has come of it though uh the the things that have happened um you you go back into was it 18th century London and you have the Jack the Ripper stories of him slicing up prostitutes. 
Uh, you you hear you go back even into the 19th century. You have the Zodiac Killer, and there's and and all the crime that surrounds that profession, and then the spread of disease and things like that it, that really contributed to it becoming illegal in the first place. Uh -huh. There's I mean there's so many things that that surround that that make that a taboo. So I would list that as probably the biggest taboo career field that any woman could get into. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's it, Oh, uh, that's another one. Dominatrix. Yeah, absolutely. But I agree. I think that's one that um yeah, I guess I think there's a whole much more but you know, no, not doing that. It's hard to say, but yeah, I think it's definitely you can make the argument that you know, a woman should have the right to choose what she does with her body and and it, so there's kind of a gray area there as well. Uh, uh -huh. Do yeah. I look at people for doing making those kind of choices? Hell no. I am no better than they are. They're no better than I am. We we all we're all people making choices. And, yeah, and, and you have to because look at the double standard again. I mean, men who are, who are strippers. I mean, that's a whole different. I mean, they're not looked at the same way at all, at <laughs> all. No, they're not. Like they're it's it, they're not looked down upon. No, they're not. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, we have a story. Yeah, we do. So I'm when, good. I college, <laughs> when I was in college, I needed to make some money. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so you I were a freaking stripper. Yeah, I worked for this company called Dakota Productions, <laughs> and we did like stripper grams and in house parties and stuff like that. And uh, I was in. <laughs> Corinne and I had been married for about a year now at this time, and we walked into uh, a Kmart. And the cashier recognized me. <laughs> oh my god! And uh, my wife just looked at me. She goes, "Well, that's awkward." <laughs> no doubt. So, yeah. Did she know you were doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. She, well, that would be even yeah. more awkward if she didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> well, no, she didn't she, at the time that I was doing that. I had, I was not with my wife. So I mean, oh, I didn't oh. know who my wife was. Oh, okay. So it, this, like I said, this happened in my first couple of years of college. So I did like right out of high school. I was 19 years old, needed some extra money. My friend, uh, my friend uh, Ace, who was the DJ at the club that I was bouncing at, I was working security at. Uh, he's like, Hey man, um, I'm part of this company called Dakota production. This is what we do. Blah, blah, blah. You can make, you know, three, $400 a night. What do you think? And I'm like, I'm in shape. Hell yeah. Let's do it. You know? So I, I did. Oh my God. You have just pretty much done, <laughs> you know, uh, I've, yeah, I've done a lot of stuff. Oh my God. Yeah, my every now and then my wife will still give me shit about that, but <laughs> it's just another experience and story to tell. That's that's one of the good stories. That's one of the fun stories. There's been other things that have happened though. Women aren't the only people who hire male strippers. No. So when you go through a McDonald's and one of the cashiers happens to be a guy and he remembers you that's a little bit uh that's a little bit more of a complicated story <laughs> yeah that would be yeah well oh uh, yeah absolutely women of course wouldn't be the only ones that hire male strippers and that's the one my wife really gives. you'll have to ask her about the mcdonald's oh come down to visit <laughs> uh. wow that's crazy well i remember a long time ago long time ago when i was young I, and I don't know. I know I saw something on TV. I don't know if it was a movie or what it was, but I remember young thinking, you know, when you're thinking about what you want to be when you grow up, that was sort of one, one of those thoughts. I mean, it wasn't like a diehard, that's what I want to be when I grow up, but it was sort of a thought like, I want to do that when I grow up. I saw the power in it. I could be a stripper. 
Yeah. <laughs> Among never- many things, I did want to be a race car driver. That was another thing. So it was the whole, I, it was the power I saw in it. And I can't remember what the movie was. I was very young. I was probably like 10, 11. And it was like, hmm, look at, I saw that as a, po- and as an empowering thing. I didn't see it as, but I don't remember what the movie was. Huh. Yeah. But even though I had that experience, that experience until I met Rhett, that experience did not change how my perception of female strippers. Because when guys do it, we do it differently. Male strippers are different than female strippers. Yeah. We go out there and it's, it's a more of a choreographed show. Yeah. Where, it's much more entertainment. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's not just getting up there by yourself, taking your, your clothes off and getting a bunch of women excited. It's, and women are way more handsy than guys can ever be. <laughs> oh my God. Are they ever, it's the women that turn it nasty when yeah. it's the guys. Like I am, I am, sh- I've been very shocked in seeing women when I've gone to these going, Oh my God, like <laughs> you are nasty bitch. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. Women scare me. I mean, <laughs> like Corinne, she'll like say, um, you know, like Corinne and her friends, they've gone to like the Chippendales and oh yeah. Really? I can't remember what they're called. She oh yeah. Them. The men down under or the thunder yeah. down under. Or something. Down under. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I've d- she's done that. She's gone to that one and she comes home. And I don't even ask her how her night was because I know, I know what goes on in these places. Oh. I just want to leave it alone. Just want to leave it alone. <laughs> Let yeah. them do what they do and have fun doing what they're but doing. The, and then these women that are watching, that go to these and watch these, and I've seen what they freaking do. And then they'll be the first ones that will uh, judge or, or, or say something nasty about a woman who maybe has chosen to, to do that, to save money or, or whatever the case may be. Um, they'll be the first ones to do that, but yet they'll be the first ones to be all nasty when they go to watch the men. It's crazy. The double standards, let people do what they want to do. Let people do what they want to do. Who are you to judge? You don't know what goes on. You don't know why people are doing things. <laughs> but yeah, that double standard is what uh, what keeps people pissed off enough to make changes. Yeah. Without that double standard, people would wouldn't care to make changes, and things would get really boring. So. Well, yeah. Not saying double. I'm not saying double standards are good. I'm not saying that at all. But it, they're a necessary evil in order for change to happen. They, t- they. Oh, absolutely. You have to test the extremes. You have to t- test extremes within yourself. Out there, you have to to find that sweet spot. For sure. Because so, yeah, that is um, our taboos. For- for career, for I career. was expecting people to like chime in a little bit more about what they thought. Um, well, the, we've only had like two or three viewers the entire time. Um, they, they're just not coming on Monday nights. We should have done this on Thursday or Friday. I know. Well, we I know it's tough. Too many things are going on on uh, this last week. It just it it, it sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's a holiday here. It's a holiday there. It's a it's holiday a, here tonight. It's a holiday here every day for me. Every day is a holiday. Okay, not a holiday. It's a holler day. Because I'm hollering at somebody at some point during the day. It's a holler day. <laughs> yeah, it's not a holiday. No, it's not. Yeah, I know. Well, see, that's the thing. It's a holiday here. So we, you guys have your long weekend, the weekend after us. Yeah. I knew it was a holiday Monday. Yeah, we get our three-day weekend next weekend. So Yeah, Monday. Yeah. I can't so wait. I'm away this week. So no Thursday? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of town. Oh, and I don't know where I'll be Thursday night to be able to, like, hook up and connect. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Well, hopefully, hopefully you'll uh, you'll be able to enjoy yourself and and just relax and 
Come I back. am. I'm going to the East Coast. Sweet. There you go. I'm going there to the go. East Coast again. Nice. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure where if I like I can't like I don't know if I'll be traveling or what I'll be doing Thursday night. So, yeah, well, I guess we'll just have to keep you all posted one way or another. <laughs> well, we'll have to. I just may do a live. I'll do a live somewhere. And uh, but you've got guests coming up. Oh, we're still in May, though. You're not yeah. doing some raw and real stuff till June. Oh, no, not till June. So until raw and real coming back in June. I've already got some amazing guests coming up. Uh, cool. zombie, zombie writer, um, romance voiceover actor, uh, Todd Brown is going ah, to be. Ah, that's and what I thought. That's yeah. Such a fun. I, I, I love interviewing writers cause they, they, they're so exciting. Their, their imaginations are amazing. I was just going to say and creative just, imagination. And it's, it's so fun just to engage with them. Yeah. So again, Todd Brown coming on, um, Blaine Kerr from uh, one of uh, from Appalachian Pie is going to be coming on the show. I have not had him on the show before, so this is going to be pretty exciting. And now that I know how to say Appalachian Pie, he's not going to beat me up like he did the last time. I said <laughs> Appalachian Pie. <laughs> they'll throw an Appalachia. I saw a joke about that. If you say it wrong, they'll throw an Appalachia. And it, right. that's how you say it. So I remember that now. Throw an Appalachia. So, yeah, so I got Blaine coming I on. I was just on Blaine's show last week, because so I don't know when that comes out. Then uh, let me see. Who else do I got? I got Abigail Sinclair. She's doing amazing things. Uh, Sarah Cruz is going to come on. Mm. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, nice. it's going to be so much fun. And then, I'll, and then we're also launching uh, Full Combat Load over at the DGN Network. And that is going to be – that's a project that's kind of – pretty near and dear to my heart it's not going to be some kind of slap nuts crazy show it's it's soldiers and marines and sailors and airmen telling their story Uh stories that everybody else says their own personal story we're going to dive deep into what it is that makes them tick and what they what their experiences like were like because everybody that comes on that show they're combat veterans who had very unique to them experiences deployed either to Afghanistan or Iraq, uh, Vietnam. We got a couple of Vietnam vets that were going to be coming up. See, that's so, interesting. So, yeah, it's, and it's, it, like I said, it's completely different than anything else I've ever done. It's, it's very, very serene, very real, very nice. much just this is how it is. So I'm very, I, I can't wait for that project to start. Good, because I, I think, I mean, it's all about the stories. It's all about the stories. Yeah, and unfortunately, we only get to see what the media shows us for the most part. So this way, we'll be able to hear, because this is only going to be an audio format only. It's not going to be live stream. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. We'll be able to hear the real stories from the people that were there. And, uh, and we'll be, you know, being able to take that journey with them, relive nice. that moment those moments so that's what it's about and that's what we're going to be doing nice and that's called full full combat load full combat load so anybody who watches this that that understands what that means full combat load that there's there's an actual meaning to that and uh it and it refers to when you go down range when you when you go outside the wire or when you're carrying your gear a full combat load of ammunition is 210 rounds for an M16, 600 rounds for for an M203 or for uh, M249. So there, there's actually a full combat load means something. So it's the stories of all the people that go down range and they come back and they have their stories. Some of them are dealing with some you know, post-traumatic stress. Some of them didn't come back with all their limbs. So... So have you started recording these interviews? Nope. We have not started recording them. We've only had our, uh, I've talked to all of the people that are going to be coming on uh, that I've, that I've contacted and we've discussed what it is that the show is going to be about and what the expectation is for it. Yeah. I've gotten a little bit of a sneak peek into what they want to talk about. And uh, yeah, the shit, the stories made me cry and I was there. Are you, 
co-hosting? Are you what's host? You're the host. Yeah, this is this is uh, my show, my veteran. Oh, okay. Show. So, okay. Yeah, I, and and when, like I said, their stories made me cry, and I was there. I saw it myself. So, yeah. it's uh, it's going to be a pretty powerful show. Cool. Well, we should syndicate that and get it out yeah. there. <laughs> that one we should. But uh, anyways, that's all I have. That's that's all that's coming up for me. It's been very busy. This has been a very busy year, actually. It's been a very busy year, personally and professionally, for you and I. I can't believe we're like in May. And yeah, we're getting close to the near the end of May. It's been busy, personally and professionally. Been very, very busy. Lots oh, of God. projects, lots of things going on. Oh my God, moves and. We're not even halfway through the year, CJ. <laughs> no, we're not. And, uh, you know, you with uh, everything you're doing, with, like you said, your move, uh, what you've done, how you've grown Mile High Radio, the things that you've been doing with that. I'm uh, changing things up with that, too. And, oh, my God, it's just. You know, me I took my, my car plan. in. Yeah. I'm good for a road trip. The only thing they said is you should get two new back tires. I don't think I'd go on a road trip with that. So, <laughs> but other than that, I'm good to go. So then that's when you say, okay, well then put them on the front tire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I put need four around. good tires. Yeah, no, they get four good tires. Yeah. You get four good tires when you come down here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, Thank you, everybody who watched, who's going to watch this again. You know, check out all the information we have on uh, on our website, gritandgracetv.com. Uh, you can find all the ways that we are available, audio, video, um, anywhere that you want to find us, iHeart. Um, tune in. We're on milehighradio.com every Monday night. Um yeah, check us out. Check out the resources. We have just uh, put up some resources on the resources tab from a show we had, our anniversary show, May 4th, one year of grit and grace. Check out the Four Agreements book. We did a show on that. And yeah, check it out. And uh, go to, uh, if, you, if you're watching us for some reason, you may not like our grit and grace page, be sure to check us out on Facebook. We'd love it if you left a review. So facebook.com slash grit and grace TV. And, um, and if you're there, you're going to learn about the stuff that CJ is doing as well. Other, you know, his show that's going to be starting. And because we do post about the stuff that we do on that page as well, because grit and grace is us. And, you know, we share about life and things that we're doing. So, yeah, check it out. Visit our website. Thank you, everybody, for watching. It, it means so much to us, and uh, we enjoy seeing you each and every week. And uh, we probably won't be coming back until next week. So go on over to those pages, see what's going on. And uh, thank you to Lynn for doing all the things that she does for us. I don't know uh, how we ever did this before without you. Thank you very much for yes. being so gracious and doing such amazing things. Yes, definitely. Gosh, definitely. So until next week, folks, we'll be seeing you. Good night. I need coffee. I need coffee too, but we're still live. Look at, watch this. This is going to be, this is going to be cool. Watch how we finish this show out. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Okay. You ready? You seeing this? Whoa. I saw that on your live last night. Yeah, we have liftoff. We are out of here. See y'all <laughs> folks. We'll catch you next time. I love it. Looks interesting when you watch it on uh